I want to continue the series, uh, Fight the Good Fight. And uh, 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 the third part is with Jesus, okay? With Jesus. <laughs> okay. I should have done that first. <laughs> but, uh, it's First uh, Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith, of the faith. Okay? Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. And I'm going to just stop there. Right? Uh, so I've been doing a series, uh, part one, fight the good fight uh, with thanksgiving. And uh, uh, part two, fight the good fight with truth. And today, fight the good fight with Jesus. Now, the series is, uh, I don't want to glorify uh, 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 the devil. Uh, but instead, I want to equip, equip the saints. This is the reason of this series. Uh, to equip the disciples of Jesus to know how to do battle against the one who hates us and, uh, and the one that who hates God. Uh, you know, the Bible says the devil comes uh, to lie, to steal, to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, but as a Christian, uh, uh, we do not need to be afraid. Right? Say to your neighbor, I'm not going to be afraid. Okay? Uh, and uh, 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 we don't have to be stressed. We don't, uh, when we are going through spiritual battle, don't be hopeless. Because uh, uh, in Jesus Christ, every spiritual battle, we have victory. Okay? In Jesus Christ. Uh, we do not fight as a Christian, we do not fight for victory, uh, but because of Jesus, uh, we fight from the position of victory. There's a difference. Right? We fight from the position of victory. Now, to be a conqueror, uh, you, you, know, uh, you get the victory after the battle, to be a conqueror. But the Bible says, as a Christian, we are more than a conqueror. Okay? We are more than a conqueror. And that means that uh, 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 because of what Jesus did for us, okay, we got to go into the battle. Before we go to, we got to know that we have the position to win. Okay? We're going to win. Now, well, um, we all drive through New Jersey Turnpike, you know. And say that I got onto the, I don't know, the, that side, and, and I'm trying to st stop the traffic. You know, they're going like 70 miles an hour. There's trucks. And, you know, I, I, I said, stop. Everybody stop, right? Uh, you know New Jersey drivers, okay? They're not going to stop. They just, you know, they'll probably run me over, <laughs> okay? Uh, but I'll probably get killed. Uh, but say that, okay? New Jersey Turnpike. I have a policeman uh, in a police uniform. I have a badge and I have a weapon. Okay? Like a you know New Jersey policeman, uh, police. And I'm on the New Jersey Turnpike. There's a truck coming. There's cars coming. I say stop. What would they do? They stop, right? Because that uniform. Uh, that badge and that weapon gives that person authority. Okay? And because of that authority, those cars and trucks have to listen. They will listen. You know? Not just have, they will listen. They will stop. Okay? And uh, see, we also have authority as a Christian. Okay? We're clothed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We're clothed in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And the Bible says we have every spiritual weapon in Jesus. Okay? So it's not you're trying to stop the traffic. You got to understand we have this position. We have this authority because of Jesus. And when we tell that traffic to stop, it has to stop. Okay? And, 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 and so because of Jesus, you know, for Christian, it is not to get the victory, but to stand in the victory that has already been won for us. Right? That has already been won for us. Now, you know, um, uh, but again, we, uh, we fight the wrong battle. That's the problem. You know, if you're battling people, you're fighting, you're not fighting the spiritual battle. The book of Ephesians says our battle is not with flesh and blood. 
is a, is a spiritual battle on this unseen realm that we got to know how to fight, not in the physical, not with one another. Eh? You know, people who drive you crazy, when I just said that, you, names came to your mind, you know, faces came to your mind, you know who they are. It might be one or two or, you know, seven, okay, seven people, you know. Uh, it might be, you know, the, the people who drive you crazy, they are not your enemy. Huh? They are not your enemy. Okay? If, if they are your enemy and you're fighting that battle, okay, you're not fighting the good fight. You're fighting the bad fight. And if you're fighting one another, okay, church, hear this, if, if you're fighting one another, we are losing the spiritual battle. Okay? You know, you hear about churches, oh, they just uh, fight with each other. Well, they're losing the spiritual battle. Okay? It's not about money or building. It's about spiritual warfare, and they, ha they are losing the spiritual warfare. Okay? So, and so our battle is against the evil ruler's authority of this unseen world. What does it mean by unseen world? You know, it's not this far away place. Okay? This unseen world is what's going on in our heart, in our mind, with our emotion, and in our relationships. Okay? You know, there are a lot of things that's going on in our relationship that you cannot see. You know? A lot of the conflict is because of thoughts and uh, different emotion and lies and what's going on in our heart. Okay? And that is the unseen spiritual realm, what's going on in our heart. Okay? And, and, and the demonic power okay, uh, does battle in our heart, in our mind, with our emotion, in our soul, okay? in our relationships. Okay? And when you are being spiritually attacked, uh, you know, this is the series. Well, let's not stay out in the open, but first, let's, you know, fight the spiritual battle with thanksgiving. Let's enter the gates with thanksgiving. Okay? And, and then last week, I talked about the devil as a deceiver. Okay? The Bible calls him a deceiver. He will lie to you. Okay? He will lie to you. And when he lies to you, we fight back with what? Truth. Okay. The truth will set you free. Okay? Truth will set you free. And today, uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, the devil. Last week was as a deceiver. Today, he is an accuser. Okay? He will accuse you. He accuses Christians. Okay? And, 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 and so how do we fight the devil who accuses us? We fight from the position in Jesus Christ. We fight from the position in Jesus Christ. The Bible describes the devil accusation as a fiery dart. Because this is what's going on in the unseen. There's this arrows and darts that he's shooting at you. Okay? And what is that art, uh, uh, the arrow and dart that he shoots? It's accusation. Okay? So what happens? Okay? Before, you know, you know, when he tempts you, oh, come on, you know, it's okay, you know, everybody does, it's not a big deal, you deserve it, you know, nobody will find out, and, you know, this is what the devil will say, you know, and then, but when you fail, when you are weak, when you made a mistake, uh, you know, uh, 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 what the devil will do, he will shoot those fiery darts at you. Okay? What would he say? How does he accuse you? This is what he will say to you. You are not worthy. You're so unrighteous. You are so filthy. You're so undeserving. You're a terrible example. If, you know, if you're a dad, you are a terrible example to your whole family, you know, uh, to your children. You, know, you are a bad mom. You're a bad dad. And He's not going to just stop there. He's going to keep shooting those arrows at you, those fiery darts, you know, darts of accusation. And as a Christian, you need to discern accusation 
from conviction. You got to discern the different voices. Okay? Uh, 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 when you hear accusation like, you are unworthy. Okay? You're not good enough. Something is really wrong with you. You're not trustworthy. Who would say that to you? Yes. Okay? It's not the Heavenly Father. Okay? It's the devil. You know, uh, you know, you'll hear again, you failed again and again, you know. You'll never overcome your addiction, you know. You failed in relationship, you know. Uh, you failed in your marriage, you know. You didn't, you know, you filed a bankruptcy, you know, you were bankrupt. You let everyone important in your life down. And there's these voices that you hear, right? Where is that voice coming from? The devil. Okay? It's the devil. Okay? The devil accuses, the Bible says, will accuse you night and day. Will accuse you night and day. Now, thank God, okay? when the devil accuses Jesus, okay, when we stand in the position of Jesus, we've got to understand, the Bible says Jesus is our advocate. I say that to your neighbor. Jesus is our advocate. Okay? So, you know, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. You know, uh, you know the reason the verse is not coming up, uh, you know, I, I forgot to s send it in. Uh, you see now, the devil's accusing me, you know, oh, you're so, you know, lazy. Why can't you do this, people? Now, you know. Anyway, that's an accusation. <laughs> okay? But 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 says, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Right? When there's accusation, okay, Jesus is our advocate. Okay? And so, you got to discern, okay, when you drive uh, what the devil wants you to wants to do in, your, in the spiritual battles to drive you away from God okay? because he's an advocate you know? he doesn't want you, you know, to be forgiven he doesn't want to, you to receive grace he doesn't want you to be free he doesn't want you to change and transform okay? uh, and so when you get closer to the devil guess this, okay, discern this you will feel more condemned. Okay? You, you, you will feel, you, you, you'll feel like you can't go to the presence of God. Okay? You'll feel guilt, shame, you feel unlovable, you feel unworthy. Okay? When you feel this way, what's happening is you're going further away from God and you're going closer to the devil. If you're feeling that way. Okay? Because more you draw to Jesus, closer to Jesus, you don't feel condemned, but you feel convicted. There's a difference. The Bible says, in Christ, there's no condemnation. Okay? I didn't make that up. That's what the Bible says in Romans 8. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay? And, and so, 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 when you feel more guilt, more shame, more condemnation, more unworthy, you know, more you feel like you can't go near the Lord, you're going toward the devil. But if you start to feel more grace, more mercy, okay, and you start to confess your sins, you receive his forgiveness, you know, and the Bible says when you do that, okay, he doesn't condemn you, but he cleanses you, the Bible says. He cleanses you from half of all unrighteousness. <laughs> no, it says, oh, can you imagine? All oh, your unrighteousness. Think about something that you, you feel the most shame about. I don't care if it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago or yesterday or this morning. <laughs> okay? Things that you feel the most shame greatest failure you feel like. Well, 
the Bible says when you get closer to the Lord, he becomes our advocate and he cleanses you from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. And what's interesting that we all know this uh, parable, the prodigal son. And that son, he really messed up. Right? Uh, 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 he, he, you know, he, he, he was going the opposite way of the father. Right? And, and he lost everything. He lived an immoral life. Uh, he was selfish, you know, and, and at the lowest point in his life, uh, he was eating the food that the pigs were eating, and the Bible says the son came to his senses, okay? Uh, instead of going toward the accusation, he, he repented. He turned around, and he started going toward the father, okay? He went toward the father, okay? And, and and this is what the parable says. When the father s saw the son, he ran toward the son. Okay? And he saw the son and go, wait, okay? you can't come in yet. Okay? You really messed up. Okay? I'll give you one year probation. Okay? I'm going to test you with all this stuff so that I could make sure that I could trust you, that you change, that you transform. I'll give you one year probation. And after that one year, we'll revisit again if I should, you know, uh, 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 let you into, into my home. And I'll be your father and you'll be m more of a my son. Is that what the parable says? No, no. No, that's not, that's what I would do, that's what you would do. If you got hurt tremendously, the son, you know, wasted half the inheritance. He was so selfish, he didn't even care about the father. Right? Yeah. I think the best human thing to do is, I'll give you a one year probation. No, that's not what the fa father ran to the son, and he, he wouldn't stop hugging him and kissing him. And... The Bible says he took his own robe that was completely clean, and you got to understand the son was filthy. He smelled. He was dirty, right? And he put that clean robe the father had and put it over the filth of the son. Okay? That's what Jesus to us as an advocate. Okay? Think of the sin that you're the most ashamed of. Okay? He doesn't tell you, I'm going to give you a probation until you, know, you, you fix it. Okay? The Bible says we are all covered with the righteousness of Christ. Is that we're filthy like the father did to the prodigal son, gave him a robe that covered him. Okay? And because Jesus being the advocate, you know how he takes it? You look at all the parable where you know, the 99 sheep went to you know, look for that one sheep that's lost. When they came back, what happened? There's a celebration. There's a celebration. There's a party that goes on. Okay? That w one coin that they couldn't find, it, the lady finds it, and what happened? There's a celebration. The lost son, the prodigal son, comes back home. Right away, what happens? There's a celebration. There's a great party that happens. Okay? You, what I would have done is, hey, we're going to hold off the celebration until you prove yourself. All right? Now, see, this is God as our advocate. He covers us. Okay? with the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And it's such a great work that it covers us completely. Okay? Now, it's interesting, uh, you know, as an advocate, the greatest, uh, uh, import, most important thing to do as an advocate is to forgive sin. 
right? To forgive sin. And it's interesting, in the gospel, in the, uh, 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 Mark chapter 2, Jesus forgave sin. And what happened was there was a paralytic, and his friends wanted to bring him to Jesus so Jesus could heal uh, uh, you know, the, their friend you know, who, had, who was paralytic. But they couldn't get in, so they went to the top of the roof, made a hole, a new roof, and brought the friend down to Jesus. Okay? And Jesus, seeing this, you know what he said to the paralytic? Friend, your sins are forgiven. Okay? Your sins are forgiven. Now, the teachers of the law, hearing that, you know what they said? How can this guy forgive sin? They were questioning Jesus' divinity and his authority. Okay? Because forgiving sin, you need authority. Okay? And so, so, so when you think about divinity and authority, there, there's a word uh, uh, um, that describes that two things. Divinity and authority is called, is, is what I call lordship. Okay, lordship. And, and in this passage, Jesus asked this question, you know, what is easier, forgive sin or to tell the paralytic, stand up and walk, get up and walk? Okay? What's easier? Okay. Honestly, you see, you know, humanly, you know, you know, oh, it must be to heal. No, no, no. Uh, in the spiritual realm, in the universe, the most difficult thing is to forgive sin. Okay? That's, that is why the teacher of the law were thinking only God has the authority to forgive sin. Only God. And Jesus is acting like he's, he has that authority, that he's divine. And that's why the teachers of the law were upset. Only God can forgive sin. And you know what Jesus says about himself? I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Okay? What he's saying is about himself. Okay? He, he is divine. He's God. He has the authority. What he's saying is, I am the Lord. Lord of lords. King of kings. Okay? The reason I'm sharing this is, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, lordship is about this. If somebody's able to take care of the greatest problem in your life, because some of you are thinking, my greatest problem is I don't have money. That's my greatest problem. Some of you are saying, my greatest problem is my child. You know, I don't know why I'm so rebellious. Some of you are saying, my greatest problem is my spouse. <laughs> right? right? My spouse. My greatest problem. My greatest problem is my boss, my job. My greatest problem is the way I look. It's my weight or my, you know, my nose or, I don't know, my greatest problem. No, no, our greatest problem is our sin. Huh? That's the greatest problem. So Jesus as an advocate, what does that mean? When we see Jesus as our advocate, okay, he's able to forgive sin. Meaning, he has authority. Right? Meaning, one more step, he is our Lord. Okay? He is our Lord. You know, uh, 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 see, lordship, now, so being an advocate, Jesus being our advocate, yes, he forgives our sin, authority of Jesus, and the lordship of Jesus. Uh, uh, the reason this is important is, uh, the, you know, we see Jesus as our friend, which is, I, I see Jesus as my friend. And the Bible says he is our friend. Right? But when it comes to spiritual battle, the devil don't care. That you're a friend of Jesus. Because the devil responds, okay? The devil is scared of and responds to authority, 
of Jesus. Do you guys hear what I just said? He responds to authority of Jesus. Right? And, 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 uh, 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 and, and so, being an advocate, forgives our sin, authority, Lord. Why is this so important to be free? Okay? Because freedom is not just removal of evil. Okay? True freedom is the Lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of our life. Okay? True freedom is not doing whatever I want, what I desire. Because people who live for themselves are in bondage. Did you know that? Okay. See, what is Satanism? Okay, Satanism is uh, 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 worshiping the devil, but there's another important philosophy in Satanism. It is worshiping your own self. That's how the devil fell. He worshiped himself. And that's why the devil fell from heaven. Paganism is that. Live for your desire, whatever you want. Right? And so, if you make your life, you know, you're free and you, you want to be free, to be free to do whatever you desire, you'll still stay in bondage. What is, when, you, when you do that, it's like you're in this jail building, you're in a prison cell, you're set free, and you go into another prison cell. That's what's happening. Right? You're not going to win the spiritual battle. Freedom is not doing what you want. It is doing what you ought. Meaning, being available to do what God wants. Okay? It's related with lordship. It's related with lord. Lordship is not... <laughs> lordship is freedom. Say that to your neighbor. Okay? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says this. Now the Lord, is, now they, they, you know, the, the name that this passage uses is the Lord. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Huh? So you're free. Maybe the demons are cast away from one area of your life, of your heart. And then you fill it with yourself. You just traded one bondage with another bondage. Okay? You're set free, and Jesus become the Lord of that area. You have free, true freedom. You have true freedom. And, uh, and I want to talk about lordship uh, because uh, uh, the lordship that we practice is much like how Queen Elizabeth is a queen of UK, United Kingdom. Right? What do I mean? Right? Queen Elizabeth doesn't really have authority to run the country. Did you know that? She doesn't. What they would do is they'll come up with a law, right? and as a ceremony, she's really a, just a ceremonial monarch, not a true monarch with authority, okay, with authority. So they'll come up with laws. They will, as a ceremony, bring the law to the queen, and she's supposed to just sign it, okay? If she, if she chooses not to sign it, it doesn't matter. It'll still become a law. <laughs> Why? Because she doesn't really have true authority to run the country, okay? She is more of a ceremonial you know, uh, a, a queen, ceremonial monarch. Here's the problem with lordship. We treat Jesus like a ceremonial monarch in our life, okay? Like a constitutional monarch. So it's almost like with, without, the way we practice lordship of Jesus Christ in our life is like, okay, Jesus, you know, with my mouth, you're the Lord, but you don't really have authority over my life. Okay? You know, have Jesus, you want him to just go through the ceremony, but 
honestly, I decide my life. Huh? I decide my life. God doesn't just want to be included in our plan. He wants you to be included in his plan. Jesus can't be a, a ceremonial king. But the Bible says he's the absolute Lord and king of our life. <clears throat> you know, this is what you and I do. And this is, okay, I'm not, you know, when I say this, I'm not just, you know, criticizing or anything. I'm in the same boat. Okay? I'm in the same boat. And this is something I, need, I, I have to work on. This is something you have to work on. You know, we plan our life. And think of, uh, uh, like, uh, as a, there's this sheet of blank paper, you know, and we write the plan of our life on this blank of sheet of paper. You know, you know if, if, if you're in high school, you said, you know, see, plan, my plan. Go to the best college I can get into. Okay? Then after college, take the job that gives the most money, right? That's our plan. Get married to a nice church-going person, you know. Then pay off the school debt, okay? And then, after a while, save up enough money to buy a house. That's my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have 2.5 children. That's, you know, the average, <laughs> okay? You know? Fi uh, and then, my kids, make sure that we move into a place where there's a good school system for my kids. And then, build up the savings, my 401k, you know, make sure there's enough when I retire. And when, wherever the job takes me and my family, you know, I'm gonna have to find a good church to attend. We will serve in the church faithfully. We will give faithfully and at least once go on a short-term mission. Huh? Huh? At least once go on a short-term mission. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? The, the, not, nothing here is bad. But what we're doing is, you know, uh, okay, uh, God, I'm going to write everything out. Okay? I'm writing it out. I, I wrote it out. And Jesus, you're my ceremonial monarch. Sign it. Sign it. Huh? That's not lordship. Huh? That's not lordship. Huh? What you and I need to do, huh? and I'm not trying to scare you, but this is something that we need to do. We need to get better at. Huh? You need to give God a blank sheet. Huh? And he writes. Right? And Jesus, after he wrote about our life, what he wants us to do, he gives it to us, and we sign that. Okay? But, uh, uh, okay, like I said, why am I talking about this? Okay? Jesus is my advocate, he forgives my sin. The devil is, is responds to authority. Authority is related with lordship. Do you guys understand what I'm trying to connect? Huh? It's related with lordship, authority. And uh, uh, a lot of us are not good with that. Huh? Uh, and but let's. Uh, I'm challenging you and I. You know we have we have a p uh, lordship. If you're very honest, if we f we if we realize we're very comfortable with him being a ceremonial monarch. But to for him to be the Lord, the King of Kings, right? The biblical lordship is very uncomfortable. What if I give God this blank page 
And he writes down, not the best paying job, but this third choice that I have. This is my third choice. You know, it doesn't pay as much. Nah. <laughs> Uh, uh, what if he writes down, and this could, you know, this scared this rich man. What if he writes, give half of your savings to the poor? <gasps> That's not God. Devil! <laughs> you know? Get thee behind me. It's so uncomfortable. Okay? What if, and this happened to uh, uh, two families in uh, Cincinnati, one of the AMI churches. Uh, uh, Pastor Johan, he was a professor in a u university, and Pastor uh, Paul, he's a doctor, medical doctor, and God, you know, uh, convicted them to move away from the suburb, suburban home 10 years ago and move into uh, over the Rhine that at that time was the most crime ridden, the inner city of Cincinnati. What if God tells you to do that? Okay? Yeah. It's scary. I'm thinking about it. God says, okay, I don't want you to live in Creskill, but Patterson. <laughs> Can I go to Passaic? <laughs> <You know? laughs> or what if he says, okay, you know, not Paramus, go to Newark. Not just anywhere in the, the, the most inner city of Newark. No, no, that's not God. <laughs> what if God writes on that blank sheet, you know, because of prosperity, gospel, and stuff, they, you know, they don't teach. But no, it's very, this, okay, it's, 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 be poor. Right? I could say this, you know why? You know, Jesus, the Son of God, was asked to be poor when he grew up on earth. And he said yes. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe, most powerful, all knowing, grew up poor. Jesus said yes. Oh, no, 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 Jesus don't know the Bible. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Prosperity gospel. If you're a Christian, you're supposed to be rich. Jesus doesn't know the Bible. Jesus grew up poor. Yeah. So, this is a challenge. Uh, uh, between you and me there, because uh, I, I don't want like to think this way, but there are things that really scares me. Uh, just being honest, really scares me, you know? And I want to ask you, what is one thing that really scares you? You know? Because, you know, again, uh, uh, we're, we have a lot of families here, and, I, you know, I struggle with this too, you know. We love our children, but we also make them our idols. We do. They become the center of our life. That's not love. Right? I grew up with my mom, I, you know, it w I became an idol. Where I was somebody that uh, 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 whatever she didn't get growing up, I'm supposed to fulfill. I, you know, that's what we think an idol does. Guess what? I think that hurt our relationship tremendously between my mom and me. Okay? There was a lot of guilt, a lot of pressure, a lot of performance. Okay? A lot of conflict. More bondage. Because when something is an idol, it becomes a bondage. Okay? We're called to love our children, but we're not called to make them an idol in our life. What if God told you that? Okay? 
right? What comes to mind? What is one thing if God wrote on the blank sheet, you will say, I can't. If something comes to mind, and I, I did this, and as your pastor, there were so many things that came to my mind. And what the Holy Spirit was saying to me is that then you have a, a lordship problem. You have a lordship problem. Yeah. So let's uh, we, let's work on this because again we need authority to overcome the spiritual battle. But if Jesus is not the Lord of our life, we don't have His authority. Let's not spend so much energy, you know, editing what you're writing about your life and fixing it and changing it. We spend so much time. Okay? Whatever you wrote, tear it up. Okay? Lordship is we give him a blank sheet and we practice. And it has to be a practice. We've got to start somewhere. And you just start saying, even though you're scared, Jesus, anything. Jesus, anytime. So instead of spending so much time writing out your life, we need to spend more time surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. When Jesus become our advocate, again, he forgives our sin. He took care of the greatest problem of our life. He took care of something that was going to bring death, spiritual death, physical death, eternal death. That should show us that uh, if he could take care of the greatest problem in our life, we could trust him in every area of our life. Every area of our life. You know, we think, okay, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. No, but also he, your brokenness, your rejection, your anger. your bondage. us to experience a, a, a victory, be more than a conqueror, you know, when we have this victory in Christ before we even fight this spiritual battle, but it does require authority, and that authority comes in our life when Jesus is the Lord of every area of our life. And just uh, uh, not that, you know, it's not scary or, you know, 
But think about something that, you know, the Holy Spirit will show you. Holy Spirit show us things that might scare us. You know. But if you could just uh, place it at the feet of Jesus, even that, God, if you say so, I will.